Even in today's modern Europe, very few know about the Sami, the continent's only indigenous people who have been systematically marginalized over centuries. Through calculated policies of cultural suppression, their ancestral lands were seized, traditional livelihoods restricted and language nearly extinguished. This quiet tragedy unfolded not in distant colonies, but within Europe itself, pushing an ancient Arctic civilization to the brink of destruction. While their remarkable resilience has prevented complete cultural collapse, the wounds of this historical injustice remain largely unacknowledged in European consciousness, a shadow cast across the northern territories they once freely inhabited. The campaign against them wasn't announced with fanfare or military parades. Instead, it arrived in the form of school inspectors, government clerks, and educational reforms that sounded reasonable on paper. Maps were redrawn, borders established, and suddenly people whose families had followed reindeer migrations for countless generations were told they belonged to countries that considered them problems to be solved. The irony was staggering. Populations that had never needed governments were now being governed by people who had never needed to survive a single Arctic winter. What happened next reveals how modern states learn to destroy cultures without leaving obvious evidence. Rather than dramatic confrontations, they chose slow strangulation. Children became the primary battlefield, but not in ways that would generate headlines or international sympathy. School policies were implemented with clinical efficiency, designed by administrators who understood that breaking the chain of cultural transmission was more effective than any military conquest. These weren't concentration camps or violent pogroms that would shock international observers, but rather institutions that appeared educational and civilized to outside observers. The psychological warfare was perhaps more devastating than physical violence would have been. Parents faced impossible choices, protect their children by teaching them Sami ways and watch them suffer in a system that punished their identity or withhold their cultural heritage to help them survive in the new order. Many chose what seemed like protection, inadvertently becoming participants in the erasure of their own traditions. The brilliance of this approach was its sustainability and its ability to make victims complicit in their own cultural destruction. School administrators discovered that shame was more powerful than chains. Children learned to associate their mother tongue with punishment, their traditional foods with primitiveness, their family's lifestyle with backwardness. They graduated as cultural refugees in their own homeland, too damaged to embrace their heritage but never fully accepted by the dominant society either. This created generations of people caught between worlds, belonging fully to neither, carrying wounds they couldn't even properly name, because the language to describe their trauma was the same language they'd been taught to suppress. The most tragic aspect wasn't the individual suffering, though that was immense, but what disappeared with each silenced voice. When elderly Sami speakers died without passing on their knowledge, entire vocabularies vanished that described Arctic phenomena no other languages could capture. Weather patterns, ice formations, reindeer behaviors, and survival techniques that had been refined over millennia disappeared into bureaucratic reports filed away in government archives. The colonizers weren't just changing people, they were editing the human encyclopedia, removing chapters about how to live in harmony with some of Earth's most challenging environments. Future generations would inherit a world with less knowledge about survival, adaptation, and sustainable living, all in the name of creating more manageable, uniform populations. While the rest of Europe was being swept by waves of conquest, migration, and genetic transformation, something extraordinary happened in the furthest reaches of Feniscandia. A population survived. Not just survived, they thrived, carrying within their cells a genetic story so unique, so impossible, that it challenges everything we thought we knew about European prehistory. This is the story of the Sami people, and what happened in their corner of Europe defies every rule of human migration and survival. While civilizations rose and fell across the continent, while entire populations were replaced and bloodlines erased, the Sami became living time capsules, preserving genetic signatures from the very dawn of European history. Their DNA doesn't just tell us who they are, it reveals what Europe was before everything changed forever. In Europe 10,000 years ago, massive ice sheets were retreating, leaving behind a landscape of impossible beauty and unforgiving harshness. Most humans were following predictable patterns, settling into agricultural communities, developing trade networks, slowly building the foundations of civilization. But in the far north, something different was happening. Small bands of people were doing the unthinkable. They're following the retreating glaciers into some of the most hostile territory on Earth. These weren't desperate refugees or outcasts. These were the ancestors of the Sami, and they were about to pull off one of the greatest survival stories in human history. 
While their contemporaries were learning to plant crops and build permanent settlements, the proto-Sami were developing an entirely different relationship with the world around them. They were learning to read the migrations of reindeer, like other cultures read the seasons. They were discovering how to extract life from landscapes that seemed designed to kill. What makes this even more remarkable is what happened next. In most of Europe, these early hunter-gatherer populations were gradually absorbed, displaced or eliminated by waves of farmers, metal workers and conquerors. The genetic signatures of Europe's first inhabitants were largely erased, written over by newer arrivals like palimpsests, but not in Sami territory. Somehow, in that frozen corner of the world, the impossible happened. The original genetic signatures not only survived, they became dominant. This isn't just unusual. In the context of European prehistory, it's almost supernatural. Everywhere else we see the same pattern repeating over millennia. New technologies arrive with new people, and the old populations fade into genetic background noise. The story of European DNA is essentially a story of replacement, wave after wave of genetic conquest, except in the North. In the North, time stood still. The first clue that something extraordinary had happened came from genetic studies that seemed too strange to believe. When researchers began analysing Sami DNA, they found genetic markers that dated back to the Mesolithic era, the Middle Stone Age, still present in high frequencies. These weren't just trace amounts, genetic echoes of ancient ancestry. These were dominant lineages, as if the Sami had somehow stepped out of time itself. The mitochondrial DNA lineage, U5B1 for instance, connects the Sami directly to Europe's earliest post-glacial inhabitants. This genetic signature is so old, so rare, in modern European populations, that finding it in such concentrations among the Sami was like discovering a living fossil. It suggested that while the rest of Europe was undergoing massive genetic upheavals, the Sami territories remained untouched, preserving bloodlines that elsewhere had vanished without a trace. But that was just the beginning of the mystery. As researchers dug deeper into Sami genetics, they discovered something even more puzzling. The Sami weren't just European. Mixed into their ancient European heritage was something completely unexpected, a significant Siberian genetic component. This wasn't the result of recent contact or trade relationships. This was ancient, deeply embedded in their genetic structure. Somehow, thousands of years ago, people from Siberia had not only reached Northern Europe, but had become integral to the formation of the Siami people. This Siberian connection revealed itself most clearly in Y-chromosome studies. The paternal lineage N1C, common among Siberian populations, appears in high frequencies among Siami men. This wasn't a minor genetic influence. It was a major component of their ancestry. It meant that the Siami story wasn't just about European survival. It was about something far more complex, an ancient mixing of populations from opposite ends of Eurasia, a genetic convergence that somehow produced one of Europe's most distinctive peoples. The implications were staggering. While most of Europe's genetic history could be understood through relatively straightforward patterns of migration and replacement, the Sami represented something entirely different. They were a genetic crossroads, a meeting point of distant populations that had somehow found each other in one of the most remote corners of the continent. They were proof that the story of human migration was far more complex, far more surprising, than anyone had imagined. To understand just how extraordinary the Sami genetic profile really is, we have to understand what normally happens to human populations over thousands of years. DNA doesn't lie, and it doesn't forget. Every migration, every conquest, every population bottleneck leaves its mark in our genetic code. When geneticists study modern European populations, they can see layer upon layer of these historical events, each one overwriting what came before. The pattern is almost universal across Europe. First came the hunter-gatherers, the continent's original inhabitants. Then came the farmers from the Near East, bringing agriculture and new genetic lineages that gradually mixed with and often dominated the older populations. Later came the Bronze Age migrations, the movements of Indo-European speakers that further reshaped the genetic landscape. Each wave brought change, dilution, transformation. But when researchers turned their attention to the Sami, they found something that shouldn't exist. Genetic continuity stretching back to the very beginning of European settlement. The Sami had somehow avoided the great genetic mixing that had affected every other population on the continent. They were like a genetic time machine, preserving ancestral lineages that everywhere else had been lost to history. The evidence for these adaptations is written in their genes in ways that are almost impossible to believe. 
take their ability to process fats and generate heat in extreme cold. The Sami carry genetic variants in the FADS1 and FADS2 genes that are perfectly tuned for a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids from fish and marine mammals. These aren't just minor dietary preferences. These are fundamental metabolic adaptations that allow the Sami to extract maximum energy and warmth from foods that other populations would struggle to digest. But it goes deeper than metabolism. The Sami have genetic variants that affect their body's ability to produce and distribute heat. They have higher concentrations of brown fat, a specialized tissue that burns calories specifically to generate warmth. This isn't just about comfort. In Arctic conditions, it's literally the difference between life and death. While other populations would need to rely entirely on external sources of warmth like fire and clothing, the Sami carry their own internal heating system written into their DNA. Even more remarkable are the genetic adaptations that affect their physical appearance and sensory capabilities. The Sami carry the derived allele of the EDAR gene, which is typically associated with East Asian populations, and affects everything from tooth shape to hair texture. This genetic variant, inherited from their Siberian ancestors, may have provided advantages in Arctic conditions that we're only beginning to understand. These physical adaptations were complemented by something even more extraordinary, cultural innovations that seem to emerge from the genetic fusion itself. The development of reindeer herding, which became central to Sami culture, wasn't just about domesticating animals. It was about creating a symbiotic relationship with the Arctic environment that allowed humans to survive in conditions where no one else could thrive. The Sami didn't just adapt to the Arctic, they became part of it. The linguistic evidence supports this picture of unique cultural adaptation. The Sami languages are part of the Finno-Ugric family, linking them to populations across northern Eurasia. But Sami languages have developed specialized vocabularies for Arctic life that are unmatched anywhere else in the world. They have dozens of words for different types of snow, ice, and reindeer behavior, not because they needed to be poetic, but because these distinctions were matters of survival. What makes this cultural and genetic adaptation even more remarkable is its timing. The fusion that created the modern Sami appears to have occurred during one of the most challenging periods in recent human history. This wasn't just survival, it was evolution in action. The combination of European and Siberian genetic lineages refined by thousands of years of natural selection in Arctic conditions, had produced a population that was essentially optimized for life in the far north. They weren't just genetically distinct from other Europeans, they were genetically superior in their specific environment. While Europe was convulsing with waves of migration, conquest and cultural transformation, something unprecedented was happening in the far north. The Sami territories were becoming a genetic fortress, protected not by walls or armies, but by some of the most hostile environment on earth. What began as adaptation to Arctic conditions evolved into something far more significant, complete isolation from the genetic upheavals that were reshaping the rest of the continent. This isolation wasn't passive, it was active and strategic. The Sami had developed a way of life so perfectly adapted to Arctic conditions that it created an almost impermeable barrier between their territories and the outside world. While other populations were fighting over fertile river valleys and trade routes, the Sami were thriving in landscapes that other cultures couldn't even cross, let alone conquer. The reindeer herds themselves became part of the isolation strategy. These animals could only survive in Arctic conditions, which meant that Sami territories were effectively worthless to populations adapted to more temperate climates. While other regions of Europe were being fought over for their agricultural potential or mineral resources, Sami lands remained untouched simply because no one else could use them. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of this isolation was its psychological dimensions. The Sami developed cultural mechanisms that reinforced their separation from the outside world. Their spiritual practices, social structures and value systems all emphasized the uniqueness of their relationship with the Arctic environment. They didn't just live differently from other Europeans, they thought of themselves as fundamentally different. The Sami, who had remained isolated for thousands of years, showed signs of genetic diversity that should have been impossible. Isolation typically reduces genetic variation through inbreeding and genetic drift, but the Sami seem to have found a way to maintain genetic health despite their separation from other populations. The answer to this paradox lay in the unique structure of Sami society and their relationship with their environment. Rather than forming a single, isolated population, the Sami had developed a complex network of loosely connected groups 
that maintain genetic exchange while remaining culturally and geographically distinct from non-Sami populations. Their semi-nomadic lifestyle, based on following reindeer herds across vast territories, created opportunities for genetic mixing within Sami populations, while maintaining barriers to mixing with outsiders. The rapid development of specialised adaptations in Sami populations demonstrates that humans are capable of much more dramatic genetic change than previously thought.